Yo, Dietrich Labbers, what's poppin'? It's time for a souped-up quantum harmonic oscillator problem. I've mentioned the quantum harmonic oscillator problem in a lot of videos, and I handled the standard example of a quantum harmonic oscillator in the video that I posted just before this one, literally just called Quantum Harmonic Oscillator. Now, you may have thought that it'd be trivially easy to just add dimensions and add more terms in the potential, representing restoring forces of the harmonic oscillator type in those directions. So instead of just a half kx squared, you'd get a half ky squared and a half kz squared. You could pick any values for each of the k's, they don't have to be the same. And the answer is you can absolutely do that, and as you'd think, it's absolutely separable. But something really interesting happens when you pick all the k's to be equal. It allows you to get a really nice form for the equation and you transform into spherical coordinates the potential ends up just being a function of the radius because the potential in Cartesian coordinates was a sum of a half k times the square of each coordinate. And then you can factor out the half and the k and just get those multiplying uh, the sum of the squares of each coordinate in parentheses. And that's just equal to the radius squared. So it ends up just being a half k r squared. And this gives you a beautiful spherically symmetric equation to solve, a beautiful spherically symmetric Schrodinger equation situation. And it absolutely is separable, of course, and uh, you get spherical harmonics for the angular part, and you get a beautiful ordinary differential equation that you, for the radial part that you can solve using the standard methods where you look for asymptotic forms and then you use polynomials. It's very cool. It's similar to the hydrogen atom problem. It's similar to a lot of the ways you solve these types of problems that show up in quantum mechanics. And it has a really pretty exact solution. You get the eigenvalues, and you get these really beautiful, pretty eigenfunctions, energy eigenstates and position space. So it's really, it's really fun. And so I've decided to make a video showing you how to do it. So here follows the math portion where I show you how to actually solve the problem out. If we start by first considering a one-dimensional quantum harmonic oscillator problem, where we have just one-half kx squared as the potential, and then we consider generalizing this to three dimensions still in Cartesian coordinates, then we have a one-half kx squared, a one-half ky squared, a one-half kz squared, all summed in the potential. And the k's don't have to be the same. But something very interesting happens when the k's are the same. When all the k's are the same, then after transforming to spherical coordinates, the potential depends only on r. It's a spherically symmetric potential. And it turns out, as a result, it's exactly solvable in spherical coordinates. It's really epic. So if we start with the Schrodinger equation with this potential inserted, and then we write the Laplacian in spherical coordinates and insert that, we arrive at this separable partial differential equation. So here we are. This is the equation we actually need to solve. Now, the first step is to separate the radial part from the angular part. So we postulate this ansatz, stick it in, divide and separate, and we ultimately get here, where I have selected this separation constant to make this equation the standard equation solved by spherical harmonics. So it's the standard partial differential equation, the standard two-variable partial differential equation for the spherical harmonics. And of course, we also have the radial equation from the other side of this relation, and we'll have to handle this differently. Now, as I said, I picked the separation constant here specifically so that this would be satisfied by the standard spherical harmonics. You'll recognize this equation from the spherical infinite potential well problem and the hydrogen atom problem where we came across it and also solved it with the standard normalized spherical harmonics. And as a result, I'm just going to state the solution that we got in those two cases right here, where I've written out the various formulas of the things that show up inside this spherical harmonics, just to make this a more complete reference. So now that we've recognized this equation from previous problems we've solved, the angular part, and even recognized it early enough to select the integration constant cleverly, and as a result, just were able to write down the solutions to it, we can skip straight to treating the radial equation instead of having to bother with any of the angular part. So here's the radial equation again. Rewriting this a little bit, specifically I applied this derivative. The next thing that's convenient to do, for reasons that will partly become apparent later when we do a coordinate transformation, and by later I mean it's the next step, 
If we define this constant and write the equation in terms of it, we arrive here. And this makes for an equation that's ready to coordinate transform with this rescaling. It's simply a rescaling of the radial coordinate because this row thing is just a constant. If we work out how the derivatives transform and then plug it all in, we arrive at this equation. If we multiply by rho squared, then we ultimately arrive here. Now, as is typical in this type of problem, we can now look at asymptotic behavior to work out a good ansatz. So specifically what we're going to do is we're going to take the large x and small x limits of this radial equation here, solve it in those cases, and use that to get the asymptotic behavior, which we can then stick as factors in a new ansatz. The idea is that if we get this asymptotic behavior out, then the remainder of the solution will just be polynomials, and we can find those by playing around with power series. So this is really classic ordinary differential equation solving. First, let's solve this equation in the large x limit. If we ignore terms that are small when x is large, then we arrive at this equation here. Inspection tells us that anything proportional to the Gaussian is a normalizable solution. We arrive at this Gaussian asymptotic behavior, which is quite interesting. Now, if we consider the small x limit, we arrive at this equation. Prior experience with radial Schrodinger equations and other differential equations of this type tells us that a normalizable solution may take the form of a power of x. So we postulate a solution like this, and then we plug it in to see what we have to set s equal to in order to make this solve it. And we find we just need to set s equal to l. This solution is normalizable because it doesn't blow up at the origin. And while it does blow up for large x, this doesn't matter because this equation is only valid for small x. For large x, we saw that the behavior of the radial part of the wave function is like a Gaussian we saw up here. So we know that when we're writing our ansatz that includes a factor for the small and large x asymptotic behavior, this Gaussian will suppress that blow up. So really all we need to do is make sure it doesn't blow up for small x because that's the only region in which we expect this equation to be valid for anyway. So then we have this ansatz. Now we can plug that into the equation. If we evaluate these derivatives, we get these results. I simplified quite a bit, especially on the second one. Then if we remember the form of the radial equation as we left it, we can then insert those and simplify divided by that Gaussian factor and then x to the l. And then I simplify down a bunch. I combine like terms. I cancel like terms that had opposite signs and ultimately got here. So now we can start working with power series. And then we can take derivatives of it and plug it in. Then the first thing that I did was I shifted those indices such that I could factor this out. Then of course if this whole thing is zero, then all the coefficients have to be zero, which gets us here. And ultimately we arrive at this recurrence relation. If we look at the large j behavior, we see that it looks like this, which is exponential. So clearly it must terminate if it is to be normalizable. So this can be accomplished if the numerator in the full recurrence relation vanishes for some particular value of j. We can select the value of e such that this happens. Let's call the value of j that zeroes the numerator j max plus 2 equals n. So we're going to call it n ultimately in the expression. We can keep the termination point of the series arbitrary but finite by keeping e a function of n. So if we stick in n for our j max plus 2, we find this quantized energy eigenvalue formula for these quantum numbers, n and l. Now m, if you remember from above, is a quantum number that showed up in the spherical harmonics, so we can see m indexes degenerate quantum states. We therefore now have the energy eigenvalues. Now let's finish sorting out the energy eigenfunctions. Given the value that we found for the energy, this value here, the recurrence relation that we found, this, simply generates associated Laguerre polynomials, specifically if we use this recurrence relation to generate a bunch of solutions, all they do is reproduce what this does in terms of associated Laguerre polynomials. So it's kind of a nice expression of it, where this x squared there is, is important. So then the full, not yet normalized radial solution can be written like this. We have these two asymptotic forms and then the polynomial behavior given right there. If we plug back in the value of x in terms of the radial coordinate and also the value of rho, then we arrive here. Now standard normalization procedures, we're normalizing the probability to be one, of course, just gives us this. It's not a convenient integral to do. Integrals like the one required to get this normalized solution are usually done with 
computers these days. So then if we bring back the angular factor, which we found was just the spherical harmonics, then we get this full, gorgeous, beautiful, romantic thing. Oh my gosh, I can't help but call it sexy. This, this full, complete, normalized, exact solution to the Schrodinger equation for the spherically symmetric quantum harmonic oscillator. It's stunning, it's beautiful, it's amazing. If you don't love it, you're insane. I love exact solutions to partial differential equations like this. They get me all hyped up. They're very cool. So now you've seen the technical details associated with actually solving the Schrodinger equation for a spherically symmetric three-dimensional quantum harmonic oscillator. You've seen the energy eigenvalues and how you find them. You've seen calculating all the asymptotic forms before that. I'm not saying this in any particular order. Then you saw how we constructed the energy eigenfunctions in their full glory. You saw that sheer beauty. I hope this helped you understand quantum mechanics better. And I hope it helped make you love quantum mechanics more. If it did, if you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe. Dietrich out.